Hello everyone and welcome back to our Unreal 5 tutorial videos. In this episode we're taking a look at a new feature introduced in 5.2 which is procedural content generation. So we're going to take a look at the tool first of all before we're going into more customizable options what you can do and achieve with this. So let's get started by taking a look at the tool. So procedural content generation is a new feature brought into Unreal 5.2. Now procedural generation isn't a new concept it's existed for many years and if you don't know what it is it's basically allowing the computer to determine the generation of assets in an environment based upon some preset rules that we provided and if you think about games like minecraft it's been a great uh, popular um, showcase of procedural generation for your own needs there but they have what we call runtime procedural what we're looking at right now for today at least is just non-runtime so this is built-in editor and it's meant to help you develop big environments now to enable uh procedural generated content we have to enable the plugin now you do that by going to your plugins menu and searching the plugin menu for procedural content and you'll see it there procedural content generation framework and procedural mesh component make sure both of these are turned on once you have, it will ask you to restart the editor, which you should do, and you can now get started. And you can test that it is working by going up to the quickly add to project button, into volumes, and you should see the PCG volume. Now this is the volume that handles procedural content generation. So let's drag that out into our scene, and let's just rescale it, like this. Now the procedural content volume is over here on the details panel explaining what graph it needs to use. Now the graph is sort of the rule set it has to follow to place objects into that volume. And the way it works is the volume will generate points based upon its surface that is provided. And the surface is detected inside of the volume. So all I have to do is provide it a graph. Now the, the plugin does come with some basic ones as a demo. So you can see how it works. So let's take a look and use the simple forest one. And then when I'm happy with that, I'm going to hit the generate button here. And as you can see, it's going to generate a simple forest for my needs. And I can rescale this box. So I can make it bigger, wider, whatever I want to do. And it, as you can see, dynamically change the generation of the environment as we go. And if I was to, uh, let me just bring that up there and hit play you can see it's now all in our game here this is the one that comes with the content the, the plugin content so it's pretty basic obviously the models are very basic but it's a great example to take a look at and see how things work if you haven't done so already so the way this works is if we go into the graph the graph here has a ton of uh, available nodes for us to use here on the left hand side. Now the demo it's given us here is just placing three assets, rocks, trees and grass and also grass on the rocks over here. And it's pretty simple when you work your way through the nodes and see how they work. So let's take for example the rocks here. The input is going to come through the landscape. So that's what is coming through the landscape proxy. It's going to come through there. The surface sampler basically as i say puts all these points all over this surface these invisible debug points and if i were to turn on debug here we would see that in in action on the uh screen over here if i just bring that across hit generate and you can see the debug points here coming up with these little gray squares okay so pretty simple set up there it's just placing these points all over the map to work out where are possible locations for it to go then the next bit over here is the transform points now this is if you want to add offsets or change the randomness that comes from each of these points so here in this case the offsets aren't being changed at all so location hasn't been affected uh scaling has been affected so it randomized between two and three times its size um as you can see here and rotation wise is rotating randomly between minus 180 or 180 in the yaw. So it can rotate a full 360 degrees um, as it's getting placed around. 
And that's all that is doing there. So it takes each of those points and just tweaks them around with this offset stuff here. The self pruning here, in this particular case, because they're all a little bit different, this one uh, will prune only overlapping points. So if we've got any rocks that are clipping with each other, we just remove them entirely. Um, this is important for things that are hard, like rocks, you don't want that to happen with. Um, by all means, you can use the self pruning here. And over here, we've got a radius. It works uh, to uh, to find out how close things are. Um, and you've got a type pruning here, large, small, meaning it'll prioritize larger objects versus small ones. Okay. Um, we also got a difference. And a difference is like the self pruning, but rather than pruning itself, it's going to prune its points from another set. Now, the other set here is the trees, and this is so that trees and rocks don't overlap. So we just plug in the differences, and it will take them away from there. So it moves them from anything that overlaps with trees. Okay. And then finally, it goes into the selection mesh spawner to spawn in the boulder mesh here. And I think this one has got one. Yep. You can add multiple if you want to do like variations of it. You can do. But here, they've just got one. And you've got some basic things to set up, such as its collision, its lighting, loads of stuff that you've seen before in other areas of the engine, if you've been playing back with it. But that goes into there. Now, this difference is also going up here to the copy points. And this is because they're using this to calculate the grass that appears on the rock. So rather than using this, the, uh, the surface, the landscape surface, we're using a different surface here. We're using the surface of the rocks instead. And that's what's happening here. We're taking the points from the mesh and putting them onto there. And then it works out density, filters it out, and then adds the mesh of the grass in. And you can basically track this through each of the trees and the grass itself. Um, and you can kind of see the same nodes being used again, such as the difference node, to use common solutions like this. And where it ends up being is this sort of random generation here. And I can drag this around the map wherever I want, and it will random generate. And like so. And because it works with a landscape, it does deform to a landscape too. So if I go to landscape and sculpt some basic stuff here, you can see it's starting to bend to it. Now I'm going to do something a bit extreme here. I'm going to do a large sort of like hill, I guess you would call it. And let me just put the volume here to be large enough to cover the top of the hill. Oh, I've stretched it. Uh, let's hit generate. Ooh, 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 ooh. There we go. Right. So the issue this one has is, as you can see, trees are coming out like at weird angles. And that's because we've got extreme angles with the landscape. Now, in real life, trees don't do this. Trees go up because they're plants. So how do we get around this? Well, let's take a look at our simple forest nodes in our graph. And so we can look at the trees. Here we are, trees. And we've got the surface sampler, which is just getting points. And we've got the transform points. Now, the transform points is where it's going to rotate the points around before it spawns something on those points. And over here, we can see it's got rotation, min and max. So it's got slight variation in X and Y and a lot in the yaw. But what we want to do is make it so that it always points up. So what we're going to do is turn on absolute rotation. What this means is that it will use the world coordinates for its rotation rather than using the, the normal from the surface. So as you can see here, the trees will now go up. Which looks a lot more realistic to what we would expect it to look like. Okay, so we hit play and we go through this and we can see our forest has come together quite nicely. Okay. And obviously, these are using some basic, basic models. But let's take a look at our Quixel Bridge and bring some in. Now, what I want you to do is probably pause the video and go to Quixel Bridge and help yourself to any tree, grass, rock assets you want to use and bring them into your project. I'm going to pause the video recording right now so I can do that and um, I'll join you back in in five seconds. Okay, so I'm back and I've brought in some assets from both Bridge and the UE Marketplace. 
Um, so let's take a look what we've got here. We've got some mega scans for some grass and plants. I've got some ferns. We'll put those in here in a moment. And I've also brought in some trees from the pack from the marketplace over here. Let me just search for static meshes. That makes it a bit quicker. Which has its own ferns and rocks as well. Comes with a few things. So let's go through and replace our simple forest meshes here with the more advanced looking stuff. So I'm going to go into our simple forest graph. And on the end, we've got the static mesh spawners. And this is here where we're going to change the loadout of these things. So let's change first of all the rocks. The rocks here, we're going to click on static mesh spawner and change the boulder here to one of our liking. So I'm going to drag this boulder in there. And there we go. Hit save. Go back to my thing here. And there we go. We can see the rock boulders being spawned in. Now, if we wanted to show multiple of them, and different types of them we can do so quite easily just go into your forest uh graph here and we've got index zero and it describes the boulder there i'm going to add another index and we're going to choose a different boulder let's go back here and choose this one there we go hit save and now it's going to randomize between those two boulders so we get two different types going in there so now let's do it to our tree meshes. So we go to trees, we go to the tree mesh spawner. Here you've got three already set up for us. We're just going to change the mesh for these to be our trees. Um, so let's go stack mesh here and find a tree to use. Um, what have we got here? We've only got one type of tree by the looks of it, which is this one. Let's take a look at that. You can see that tree spawning in there. Just fine. Okay. Um, if I search for tree, maybe I'll give it a bit of leaves, tree, tree branch. I mean, we can replace it with broken trees and tree bark and things like that, I guess. Um, well, yeah, let's, let's do that. So we're going to simple forest here. Let's close index zero down. Change this one here to, um, let's do it to, let's uh, take mesh. Let's do it some like big leaves, uh, big plant leaves. Let's do this one. Might be interesting to see that. Yeah, got like little plants that are now spawning in. And we'll do one more. And we'll do. Oh, I don't know. Let's do. Let's do another fern here. Let's do a fern. Okay. So now we've got ferns and other things spawning in too then what's left is the grass so let's go in and do the grass oh, let's go back to simple forest uh, go on the grass one down here that mesh spawner and we've got mesh entities over here and we're going to change that to one of our grass here so we do grass small and put that in there and i'd probably add a second one because i've got multiple meshes of that let's just chuck that in there like that and hit save okay so now you're getting like these small little tufts of grass now appearing but these are quite small as you can see so let's change the size of these so they're not so so piddly uh let's go back into the, the graph here go to the transform points for the grass and over here we've got scale min scale max and default is 0.5 to 7 point uh, 0.75 so i'm going to reset down to one and set the scale max here to let's say two 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 and see where that's like uh we may scale it up even further yeah it's not too bad let's try going up a bit a bit further i feel so oh i keep doing that keep going back to simple forest here so the minimum i'm going to change to uh three 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 and the max i'm going to do is four 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 There we go, that's a lot more interesting looking. 
Uh, we've still got the ones on the, the bits to do on the rocks, but our procedural forest is looking a lot nicer. Yeah. Um, we've got some collision issues here. I think something has got collision on it that I want to take off. So you have to be aware. Oh, I think it's the trees. So the trees seem to have like large collision on them. So let's say you hey hey fix that. So if I go to that tree mesh I've got here, and I test this out. If I look at the mesh and if I go to show simple collision, you see it's quite a large collision box. Obviously that's nuts, we don't want it that big. So we're gonna go to collision and do remove collision. So it has no collision now. And we're gonna add a different one instead. So we're gonna add a capsule. And I'm just going to resize and rotate that around. Okay, and then we're going to scale that one down, turn down the snap here. Yeah, that'll do. Don't think too crazy. That'll do. Save, close that. And now I should be a lot more able to walk around my environment. Because now the trees won't have such large collision boxes on them. There you go. And so we can get some pretty decent looking environment art in there and make it generate this environment live. Now, it won't be perfect. There'll be some things you have to take into account. Uh, but what we'll do in future episodes is go through the various nodes you see in that graph to make more complex uh, procedural generation content and graphs for your volumes. And there you go. We've covered some of the basic concepts of the tool and how it works. But in the next episode, we're going to start doing a bigger, deeper dive into that graph and looking at what we can do and achieve with that graph's various nodes. You can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.